nicely stacked panel. We've got the Killer Whales judges, Altcoin Daily, Mario. Uh, we've got the projects over here today too, Celebratex, FX1, and the Hello Labs team. Um, without further ado, we can get into it. And um, any of the judges that are here, please uh, request to speak and we will bring you up. Um, super, super stacked topic today. We're going to be talking everything entertainment and it's absolutely loaded. So, yeah, without further ado, I want to welcome everybody to the Killer Whales episode two after show space. Today, we're going to be talking about everything entertainment. So, we've got Paul, Sander, and Vince uh, from the Hello Labs producer side of things. And uh, two projects from the episode, obviously, FX1 and Celebratix, um, as well as the Killer Whales judges. The gloves will be coming off as we hear what so you're everyone up, really thinks about the project. Sorry, can you guys hear me all right? Definitely. I think Paul was just breaking up if he was trying to say something. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, not at all. Paul, how you doing? Doing good, thanks, Nosh. Excited to get stuck in. Absolutely, absolutely. Some huge announcements coming up today with, uh, with everything that's been going on. And, you know, before we get into the weeds of today's space, uh, let's talk about that announcement. We've got... You know, Killer Whales coming to Apple TV and Google Play on March 11th. Uh, Paul, would you like to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so following on from last week when we talked about Apple TV, uh, we've since just announced Google Play today. So it just kind of expands our reach even more, and it kind of gets us on that one step closer to that mission of being kind of a household brand and a household name. Um, and Google Play is kind of a bit of a sleeping giant when it comes to the TV and movies world. Everyone kind of knows them as a as like a gaming kind of uh, platform, but they actually have two and a half billion users each month uh, in over 100 countries. So they actually do TV and movies as well. So it's like a really great coup for us to be on there um, starting from March 11th. If you actually head over to there now, you'll be able to add the show to your watch list uh, and make sure you're the first to watch when it drops on March 11th. And for those people that can't wait that long, um, this show is available now on Hello TV, so you can use your Hello tokens, head over to tv.hello.one, and you can watch the episodes that are currently out, episode one, which is last week, uh, and then episode two, which is the one we're talking about tonight. Absolutely exciting times ahead, and so much exposure coming for the featured projects that are doing revolutionary things uh, in the entertainment space, and you know, before we get into that and, and pass it over to the projects, uh, would love to, for everyone, you know, who's, who's familiar or unfamiliar with KWTV, would love to get an executive kind of summary for what episode two of Killer Whales is all about, Paul. Yeah, so every episode in Killer Whales focuses on like a different theme. So last week we had the real world utility episode, and then this episode is about Web3 Entertainment. So entertainment is like a, uh, like a half a trillion industry every year. And it's kind of relatively untapped in the gaming sector and the crypto sector. We have obviously a lot of gaming projects, but we don't have a lot of kind of projects that take on the rest of the entertainment space. So this episode is like predominantly focused on finding those next kind of Sony's, those next big music platforms, those next Spotify's. And a lot of the projects on this space are kind of just very new startups. Um, so they were coming onto this episode trying to really kind of make a name for themselves. And it's not easy because you're trying to compete with some of the absolute like monsters, massive pro companies in this industry. So they had a very uphill challenge. And I feel like when you watch the episode, you really get a sense that the, the, the uphill struggle that they're on. Uh, but I think they held their own and kind of came out. Well, one, one project in particular came out kind of really well. And the other ones walked away with some great feedback. Redefining the entertainment space and innovating on it is honestly a, a huge challenge. And I think it's so nascent in its in its entirety, especially in crypto and, and Web3. And, you know, choosing uh, uh, the projects that come up and actually get to feature on Killer Whales, you know, and, and present their, their case to the world is absolutely it's a difficult process, and you know, I'd love to hear from the, from the CEO, from Sander. I'd like to come to you next and kind of ask, like, how did you decide on which projects should you know make the cut and make it onto the final show? What were some of the qualities that uh, the Killer Whales producers were looking for? 
Hey, Nosh. Yeah, thanks uh, for asking that question. The, the thing with a show like Killer Whales is, is that it needs to be entertaining. So people at home, they need to, you know, they need to want to tune in and, you know, app, open their Apple TV or open their Google Play or open any of the other streams that we might be announcing later on. And they, you know, whenever they start watching, they need to be like, oh, wow, you know, I really understand this because I think a lot of the things that we in this space just kind of forget is that, if, if, if I ask my brother or my father and I say, hey, you know, did you guys ever, you know, download a crypto wallet or uh, play a Web3 game or buy an NFT? They're like, mm, yeah, I, I have no idea how to do that. You know, how, can you help me? So one of the things that we've been looking for in the projects to come onto the show is that they have a narrative that is pretty easy to explain, uh, especially for the people watching at home. Um, another thing that we were looking for was, you know, do they have like a product that people can actually test or play around with and, and how do they, how do the people at home perceive that product? So we were really trying to bring out projects that understood what, you know, they understood what they should do to uh, bring a narrative that people at home understand, but also something that actually worked, a uh, project that had a, a bit of a community. Some of them were really early. Some of them, you know, already had like, hundreds of millions of dollars in market cap. So we were looking for the projects that were interesting for the people at home, that had a little bit of traction, and, and also were able to basically qualify on all the little bit less interesting, but still important legal issues, uh, like uh, you know having a good white paper and, on a, and uh, also having a, a legal setup uh, in a way that allows us to bring, to bring Web3 projects to the masses. That's awesome. And that foundation is, is so big for coming up on a stage like Killer Whales, especially considering that this show is going to have an absolutely massive reach coming to Google Play and Apple TV. It's, it's amazing to see that crypto is finally getting its, its, uh, its, its day in the light for, for the world to see how the space has developed and how we're legitimatizing and bringing these incredible innovators here to actually build something cool that people are able to understand and, and want to be a part of, um, you know, and, and that's that's what this is all about. And I'd like to actually go over to the co-executive producer, uh, Vince, who's here today with us, Ninja. Uh, Vince, what was the atmosphere like on set for you? I mean, it's so much um, just insanity going on all at once with all these different projects and the amazing personalities and judges that we've got. Uh, you know, we've got Mario, we've got Yev, we've got um, Alcoin Daily, all, just absolutely incredibly stacked panel, and these people bring so much to the table. Um, judging by the clips from the show, things obviously get quite spicy at times, and we like a little bit of spice. Um, how do you exactly choose the clips and the things that make it to the actual final cut? Uh, you know, we'd love to hear your process and what that's like. Hey, what's up? What's up, everyone? Uh, thank you so much for having this space. Great to see all of my family, my killer whales. Hello, family in the house, both on stage and, and uh, in the listeners. Um, so uh, I'm going to start with the first half of your question. Um, on set, um, as anyone who was there knows, um, it, it was absolutely electric. It was the most fun ever. Um, it's, you know, as producers, um, you know, Paul and myself and Sandra, but more so the producers who were on the ground, um, you know, we, we, <laughs> we, for lack of a better word, it was fun, but, you know, we slaved at this thing for months and months and months. And, you know, for those who don't know production, like the magic and the fun really happens once we get on set. So we had multiple days of shooting, um, the whales, the projects, um, our production team, um, you know, Paul, uh, you know, in his original vision, uh, chose an epic, epic location. Um, there's no other way to say it. It was fun as fuck. Like, it was, it, like, I can't, I mean, you hear it in my voice. Um, I'm trying to articulate it more. Like, this is what I love to do. It was, um, you know, Paul and I have articulated previously, you know, both having, um, you know, extensive entertainment backgrounds, but also um, being in crypto for some good time, too. It, it was fun to, you know, after over seven years of being crypto to finally marriage, uh, marry my two passions together. And, and it was not like, not just like that for me, but for Paul and, and many other people who were crypto um, native. So that's how it was on set. I can't describe it enough. Um, you know, we have some great BTS. I said it on the last space I was in. I'm like, when we start releasing the BTS, watch that too. Cause there's some really, you just, it gives you just the inside peek 
onto you know the magic that happens when there's magic happening on set it absolutely translates to screen um as far as the editing process um i'll say this you know um i really appreciate paul um he gave uh myself and our editors a long long leash to have a lot of fun uh paul was right there it, with every edit, you know, in, and um, I, I can just say this, it goes back to what Sanders says, is that we have not forgotten that although this is a quote-unquote crypto show, it's an entertainment show first. So we really, really worked hard to bring the most authentic um, people, stories, um, uh, perspectives, um, and entertain and just have fun. So I, ho I hope that translated on screen and... Uh, and yeah, it, it was a blast. I, I it was, I, I'm not just saying this because I'm on this space, but it, it was my best TV show experience ever so far. And, and I got to give a lot of the kudos to um, Paul and Sander. Um, you know, I worked with Paul hand in hand every single day for almost a year, and uh, you know, it, it's really flows from the top. You know, uh, Paul had a, a really strong vision, has a really strong vision. And he just hired the right people to execute it. And so it, it was, again, coming from my end, it was really fun to have that, that really, that freedom to have fun and a space that I'm really passionate about. I absolutely love that, Vince. Thank you so much for such an honest and just real answer. You know, it's, it's incredible to see, especially film native people come into the space and just take charge and build something absolutely incredible. Um, like like with killer whales and you know entertainment is such a is such a vast industry um, and it doesn't really have any sort of uh, boundaries when it comes to how it can grow and where it can go from here and I kind of want to move over to the, the whales real quick and kind of get a little bit more from them on the show theme uh, especially you know with the use cases of entertainment going forward in crypto um, how do you guys see this segment developing in the coming years and like, where do you think it's going to go? And I, I'd love to start with Mario and then uh, go straight over to Aaron, uh, Altcoin Daily, right after. Yeah, well, so what's the question? I heard the question, but I didn't understand what you mean. So where do you see the narrative going? Yeah, where do you think the entertainment narrative is going to go in crypto? And what do you feel like is the right path for it to grow and how, how that may, may come to life? Hmm. How do I see the entertainment narrative? So you're talking about media in crypto as in shows like you and others doing you know, better media that we saw in the last two bull markets? Or you saw, you're talking about the decentralization of the entertainment industry? It's, it's, it's a big topic. Mario. I'll make yeah, for you, Mario. <laughs> Mario, what, 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 how much space is there in, the, in this industry for entertainment to thrive or to do something considering that? Ah, okay, okay. So it's, it's the former. So it, media, the potential of media in the industry. I think people are just silly by not doing more. Um, like, I'll give you an example just personally. So obviously I have shows outside of crypto. When people ask me, I get made fun of, I should probably pin something if I'll try to find it and pin it. People will make fun of me, you know, political people, political commentators, maybe even politicians. They make fun of me like, hey, look at the guy commenting on all this news and all these breaking news events and covering all these important, uh, uh, important events. When they post like a screenshot of my crypto punk or my description in the company, the incubator I have, and they make fun of it. Yeah, I'm still doing it. So if you're asking yourself why, it's just because you'd be silly not to. I think there's just so much room for others. You know, killer whales probably going to be difficult to outdo them. But just having, you know, there's a lot of room for other players uh, in the industry. We're doing spaces. We're going to announce something pretty major on YouTube. Hey, Outcoin Daily. <laughs> we should tell you about it before we announce it. We're going to announce something very major on YouTube very soon. A lot of potential. <laughs> Sorry, I'll go daily. I didn't. Aaron Austin, but the, you guys, uh, the, you guys are a league of your own. Don't worry. It'll take us at least a couple of months to beat you. So don't stress too much. Um, yeah, but there's a lot of potential. YouTube and Twitter is, is obviously, or oh, Twitter is where we've been focusing so far. X and YouTube and um, you know, just today I told my team we're going to start launching a, a, a gaming streaming uh, show as well, where we we have players. I'm not a gamer, but I'm you know heavy investor in the gaming space. And we're going to have players stream them playing a game on Twitter and on, on, on uh, our special uh, uh, announcement on YouTube soon as well. So, yeah, I think this is uh, kind of answers your question and actions speak louder than words. And here's my, my actions. 
That's awesome, Mario. And this was ex- yes, we we love to go over to to Aaron. Uh, what's what's going on, Aaron? Let's let's hear from you. What's up, guys? Aaron from Altcoin Daily. Big props to Killer Whales, Hello Labs, Sander, Ninja, Paul. Um, and for those you know wondering about Mario, that's exactly what it was like working with him too. It's like pulling teeth. I mean, Mario, next time take a day to answer the most broad question you're going to get on this panel. Um, but I'd like to talk about entertainment, and that is very broad. On the show, we had music, you know, Spotify competitors, uh, sports entertainment. Um, of course, you know, I come from the acting and filmmaking world, both me and my brother, a little background on us, you know, our first career was acting and filmmaking. Saw some success, uh, Lifetime movies, Fox's 911 Lone Star with Rob Lowe, uh, Tosh.0, Insecure, tons of A-list commercials like Sprint, Hotels.com, BMW, produced a few award-winning short films. Now, despite all that, a real issue that we found is Hollywood filled with gatekeepers. And despite how much we wanted to work, Austin and I, there were a lot of roadblocks, a lot of middlemen. So about six years ago, we got into YouTube and crypto full time at the same time. And part, partly the reason we got into YouTube and crypto, because these roadblocks, these middlemen were no longer a problem. The more I worked, the more, uh, you know, the more I put in, the more I could get out of it in a sense. Now, despite that, YouTube still has room for improvement. There's still plenty of issues. Um, Music, sports entertainment, these industries have issues. I mean, we have a Taylor's version for Taylor's album, but what about Travis Kelsey's version? Or or more than that, what about the majority of up-and-comers who are grinding every day but feel beaten down by the system? I mean, Taylor's got to remake her albums. They're kicking Kanye off the platforms. If they can do that to the biggest artists, imagine what they can do to you. Imagine what they can do to your neighbor. There's There's a lack of transparency in the space. There's a lack of privacy, a lack of data control. Things could be better for the entertainment and the platforms. Things could be better for the entertainers. Things could be better for the fans. So I know we have two companies from the show on today, Celebratix, that's uh, the ticketing industry, especially for nightlife, and FX1, that's sports entertainment. Also on the show, we featured Spotify competitors. And, I, you know, thinking back, I was actually really inspired watching this show, especially the way if you guys watch the Super Bowl to see all, like, the VR and AR they were doing. You know... I, you know, with the show, as mentioned, you know, it was just a little bit too early, which is why I think a lot of the competitors got sync votes. But, you know, honestly, I'm hoping today they can update me on their progress because I think that, you know, eventually Web3 is going to uproot these industries and it's only a matter of when that happens. Beautiful answer. Beautiful answer. And that's exactly the power of Web3 and a show like Killer Whales is bringing these voices to life and, you know, not being in an industry where things are gatekept. And, you know, I, I grew up, you know, literally all point daily. I was, I've was i been watching your channel since day one. Uh, <laughs> like, I remember a, few, a first introduction for me was through through your YouTube channel. And it's just incredible to see your journey in the space, man. Um, yeah, for, you know, for the, without further ado, let's get into the projects themselves, guys. We've got uh, you know, Celebratex, the amazing NFT ticketing solution, and uh, and we have FX1 as well. So, Frank from Celebratex, welcome, welcome. How are you? And we, you know, we'd all love to hear more about Celebratex. Uh, yeah, come up on stage. Great, thank you so much, man, for the intro, and um, super cool to reconnect with everybody here. I, I had an absolute blast shooting the Killer Wheel show in LA in uh, July next uh, last year. Uh, and I actually met Sander during the uh, Paris Blockchain Week in March, just a few months earlier. And um, yeah, it's been an incredible journey. It's been almost a year now. And um, I mean, so many, so much amazing stuff has happened. And uh, it was really fun looking back at the actual show. Um, I organized a watch party at Soul House here in Amsterdam uh, last Saturday. So we uh, watched with uh, like 50 friends. And um, yeah, excited to dive a bit more deeper into um, everything that's going on here. Let's let's hear a little bit more about Celebratix, and you know, just for our view, for our, our listeners and everybody here today, kind of what was the foundation and the solution you were really trying to solve, you know, with with Celebratix and this ticketing solution, um, and, and a little bit about your background, if you may. Yeah, for sure, man. So Celebratix started about two years ago, so we're really quite early in the journey still, and I uh, co-created it with my two founders, Hans Jochem and Gaur Rumbaud. And one of them actually runs the largest festival in the Netherlands. It's called Oranje Bloesem. They do about 40,000 people in Olympic Stadium. 
So coming from the event organizing industry, we really understood the need. And basically what we're solving is that the status quo isn't beneficial for event organizers, where you have a separate primary market, which is quite expensive, an external secondary market, which is also very fraudulent, and then also a separate guest list solution. And basically all these three components we solve into one solution. So we're like a one-stop shop for events. And we don't do it through a centralized database, uh, yeah, database but decentralized, which means that we're completely built uh, on Solana. We're also backing us in our new round, so it's super exciting. And basically now we're transitioning uh, all the yeah, festival tickets towards NFTs instead of PDFs. And we've been seeing a lot of we've been seeing a lot of traction on that side. Uh, also, the nightclubs that uh, I think Mario mentioned earlier, um, we also had them during the uh, pitch already. Um, so it's fun to see really the idea and the value proposition come to life now. Love to hear that, man. And that's that natural journey and progression, right? You've been in that, and and you're obviously a very sociable person, and kind of this is something that you actually relate to. So it's really cool to see a uh, you know a founder come to this level and come up on a show like Killer Whales and be able to talk about this. Um, and I want to hear a little bit more from you on what it was like being, you know, being on the show. But before we do that, guys, please be sure to like, retweet, and blow up the pinned tweets. Um, you know, we've got an amazing panel here today, and it's not every day we get to do these spaces and come together. So let's let's definitely get those numbers up. Uh, but yeah, back back to you, Frank. You know, tell us a little bit more about what it was like being, you know, standing in front of these absolute behemoths of judges um you know how did it feel what, what was going through your mind and um yeah how, how was the pitch for you yeah so the the pitch was like i was i actually created um uh reels uh like last night about like the entire experience and i said like i was like feeling more of like a nervous wreck because obviously i've been following uh, mario and the altcoin daily guys for a really long time Gra uh, gracie from bitget as well uh, Anthony Scaramucci, who actually called me Pretty Boy. Uh, it's not a nickname I'll be able to get rid of uh, anytime soon. Uh, everybody in the office has uh, basically adopted it. So uh, thank you for that, uh, Anthony. Uh, but no, man, it was a super exciting uh, pitch and um, yeah, once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, flying to LA with actually one of my investors as well, who wasn't allowed to be on the on the actual production at the time. Uh, like it was just really, uh, yeah, I had to do it by myself, right? And um, yeah, I think the pitch um, went quite okay. Um, obviously, uh, I, I will maybe not spoil the the, the end result because uh, yeah, there might be some people in this space who still want to see it. Um, but it was a really fun experience, and I really learned a lot from the feedback that the judges gave me and. Um, yeah, excited for what the future is going to hold. Yeah, it's kind of worth it to be on like a, a huge global stage and get called Pretty Boy, but you know, with one swim vote, so that kind of balances out. <laughs> and we, you know, we'd love to, we'd love to know, you know, obviously like amazing pitch, and and you you received a lot of good advice, a lot of praise, and it takes courage to come up and is obviously speak in front of these huge judges. Um, can you explain to us how you use the feedback from the show and? Uh, and, and where you took that and if it brought any progress to where you guys are at today. Yeah, for sure. I, th I think I'm, I think a very big part uh, of uh, yeah, receiving one swim vote is um, that we actually were quite early stage at the time and we had a great idea in our opinion and it was all coming down to the execution, which is also one of the reasons why Anthony decided uh, to sink at the time. Um, and I feel like the execution really has been on point over the last uh yeah eight to nine months so we really uh, focused on the onboarding of these new uh, nightclubs these events these festivals we've also broadened our horizons in a sense that we're also looking into the ticketing for musea which has a very big fraudulent secondary market for any of you who's been in amsterdam uh, think of the anna frank house uh, which is like 50 euros for a ticket and you need to book it at least a few weeks in advance because otherwise you're just not gonna uh, yeah get in there so we've really also shifted uh, in that sense and just basically, uh, like you said, uh, are focusing on growing organically and really targeting and solving the issues we see ourselves as event organizers. And I think that's also where uh, the biggest growth lies for us. That's awesome, man. Progress is always good. And uh, I'd like to go over to the whales if you have any questions uh, for Frank. Yeah, you can jump in. First of all, good to see you, Frank. I just want to say, you know, your company, Celebratix, you know, upending the ticketing system. 
I think, and I think a lot of people see this, definitely something that could happen as far as incorporating crypto, so definitely something that needs to happen. A little personal story about myself and my brother when we were little eight-year-olds, we actually got scammed with some tickets. My family, I, I, I don't know if these dates are right, I think it was either 95 or 98, and the Cleveland Indians, the Major League Baseball team, were in the championships or in the playoffs or something, and... Uh, I was just eight years old, but we're going there to see the big game. You know, Cleveland doesn't have a lot, so when your sports team can get up there, that's obviously a big deal. We go there with my family. My dad uh, gets some scalped tickets, and then we go up to, you know, get go to our seats, and we realize that these tickets are not the ones that were advertised. There was one good ticket, and the other three were standing room only at a packed game, and so essentially, we weren't going to be able to see the game. And, you know, two little eight-year-old boys with their baseball gloves had to, like, watch the game on a small TV in the 90s um, by concessions. And that was lame. And we got scammed with those tickets. So certainly something like your company um, is exciting to me. And it was exciting to me on the show. Um, during the show, I think a major problem that, uh, you know, just stop people from saying swim was how early you are. Now, happy to hear about... Your Solana, uh, working with Solana, because that's a great blockchain for uh, to execute cheap transactions and, and cheap tricketing, ticketing. Um, but you know, ultimately, I'd love to hear like you have uh, more nightclubs or just more locations where this is in operation, or basically a better sense. I mean, that's like I would I would change my vote to swim today if uh, I heard something like that. But either way, it was uh, you know you're a great uh, great contestant on the show. That's that's what I think. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. And uh, yeah, sorry to hear about uh, the actual fraud that you experienced when you were eight years old. I get that's basically proving the point of what we're doing here, right? So with PDFs, every single ticket is still uh, screenshotable and you can share it to a friend. And then whichever friend enters the venue first is the one that actually gets in and the other one uh, does not, right? With NFT ticketing, there's just one solution and based on the single source of truth provided by Solana in this instance, you're actually able to 100% securely um, buy or sell your tickets. So there's no more fake scalping. And in that sense, um, yeah, any, any of that stuff involved. And for us, like, because we're going to be the one to really introduce this en masse, right? Because we're by event organizers, for event organizers, and we've managed to onboard. Is it is it currently is it currently working? Like, is are pe people currently using yes. it? Yes. Where are yeah, you? Yeah, definitely. I love an yeah. update. So uh, based on the update, we're currently uh, operating in multiple nightclubs in Amsterdam. And we also signed with a uh, blockchain conference in the Nordics. Uh, so that's in Scandinavia, uh, in Copenhagen in uh, August. Um, so there's a lot of cool projects and event, events that are actually running through our system right now. Um, it's in the hundred thousands of tickets a year. So yeah, we're, and that's a recurring contract, right? So we're really, um, yeah, stepping up our game this year. That's incredible, man. Love that. Um, Mario. Any thoughts? Any questions? How are you feeling? I, by the way, guys, as Mario uh, gets collected, I have in my notes, Mario said sink. He said he wanted to float, but it was too early for him and is too competitive of a space. That's what Mario said day of when he gave his verdict. I felt like Mario was a bit jealous is, on the day. I think that maybe tied into his, um, I think Frank was dressed better than Mario. So I think that played a lot into Mario's actually voting. Yeah, we all made fun of Mario for being young. And then this young guy named Frank comes up and everybody likes him. And then Mario's like, what, guys? That was supposed to be me. Yeah, and I think there was also this one part where he said that he really liked Amsterdam a lot because he visited and had a extraordinarily great time. I'm very glad that they edited that out of the actual show because, uh, yeah. That was a special part as well. Yeah, it's, it's always... And by the way, this is par for the course. With this par for the course with Mario's, like, regular spaces, you know, that's what he does. He's always just, like, he's in there for the beginning, he says a few things, then he hands it off to a team member, and you never hear from him again. <laughs> I think he's going to look in the corner, so maybe let's move on. Absolutely, yep. It's always, it's always tough for two pretty boys in the same space. So, uh, next up, we got Trent and Damon from FX1, guys. Um, absolutely massive project. It's picked up so much steam. Uh, in the, you know, in the past weeks, and it's just doing absolutely incredible. Um, FX1, would love to hear from you guys more about your, your project and come up and introduce yourselves. Hello. How are you today? Good. Hey, Trent. Good. <laughs> Thanks for the introduction. Hey, hey, guys. How you doing? Great to be a part of it. Super excited. 
All right. Uh, well, we'll get going into it. How about I kick off? So I'm Damien, co-founder, CEO. Um, firstly, I just want to give a... Oh, we might have lost... Um, did, we, did we lose them? Yeah. Oh, are you there? I think so. Oh, am I lost? Oh, we can hear you now. You're good. Pick it up from the beginning. I just want to make sure it's the show. Uh, I'm not sure if FX1 is rugging or if it's if it's on my end. Um, I, I can't hear them. I, can't I, hear. I think it's... I can't hear them as well. So oh, yeah, I'm here. I'm the show. Sure. Yeah, yeah. How you, good? How you doing, guys? Hey, hey, yeah. Good. So first, I just want to say thank you to everyone. Thanks for having us on the show. We had like a, a awesome time, and we're like you know so excited to be doing it, and so so excited to be building what, we, what we've been building. So, well, I guess what we wanted to do is just take you a bit over the path of where we've been since since the show, because uh, I know that not everyone's seen the show, and that's where we thought we'd start. So what I'll do is I'll go to what we're doing and just talk a bit about where we were at the show and then where we are now, that which should give the context. But what we, we are so excited to be releasing is that just in a couple of weeks, we'll be releasing our MVP. Where we have moved since the show is deep, more in, deep into analytics. So we, we are focusing on combat sports analytics. That's where we are. So in a couple of weeks' time, you'll be able to, you can download that now and get ready for the first fight that we cover, but it'll be a UFC fight in two to three weeks you'll be able to get live stats for that fight. So you can't get that anywhere. Live stats do not exist for any combat sports at the moment, including boxing or MMA. So you'll be able to get live stats, so see punches, kicks in real time. You'll also be able to, to get the speed of strikes. So you know how someone, how, how fast someone is striking and kicking in, in, in real time using miles per hour. We also have force. So we use pounds per force and we know how, how hard someone is hitting. So we're actually bringing a metric to significant strikes and, and define what actually is a significant strike. But more than just the data, it's the way that we're presenting it. We're putting a lot of this data on time-based charts. So similar to you looking at a Bitcoin chart, uh, instead you'll be able to look at a pair of punches versus speed chart. And you'll be able to track the speed of a, of, of a fighter's punches or kicks and see over time, is it increasing, is it decreasing? So this is what we're going to be launching with. It's incredible what we've done. We're so bullish on what this is going to do and how this is going to improve the live fight experience. But and what we're also excited about is the, is the traction. We're seeing 200%, over 200% of monthly improvements in downloads of the app. So people are hearing about what we're doing. They're seeing the designs that we've built. And they're continuing to download the app, get ready for the first fight that we'll be releasing. But we've also proven our ability to market because we know that marketing is a big part of a company and a huge important part. If you look at our, our community on X, we've got over 21,000 there. We've got a TG community of just under 3,000. We also have around 4,000 holders of our token. And we've been able to generate over 20 million in trading volume since we went, went live of it. So that's kind of like what we are and why you should get excited and why you should definitely go to our website, download our app and get ready for the next fight that we'll be covering but of course we do plan to go into other combat sports other mma leagues boxing jiu-jitsu before we then branch into other sports so that's kind of like where we've gone since the show what well a bit about our future we believe it's very bright we have decided that based on our ability to collect data and really drive an understanding around what is happening these new data sets that no one is currently collecting we felt that uh, predictions which we're already generating are going to get better and better and therefore betting played a big part of our future so that's where we're headed we're heading to a consumer betting platform that is going to be using our predictions our analysis in order to give people an edge give people an edge when they're betting but also make it fun and, and entertaining because we just don't want to be a regular betting platform we're looking to introduce new forms of betting using charts that people also use when they trade and giving people just a really exciting future around how do you how do you trade how do you bet on sports make it fun and engaging which we don't think many platforms use 
And then, of course, the blockchain technology and cryptocurrency, which is a big part of our future. So we want to drive cryptocurrency as the form, the major form of payment on platform. You'd be able to pay in any form of crypto, but paying in the FX1 coin or FXI, which is our native token, will we'll provide discounts and benefits. We're also using, though, blockchain technology and smart contract technology to lock up bets. So we want to get rid of the middleman and the escrow. We want to make sure that when a bet is placed, it will lock up those funds. And it will stay there until the Oracle tells it that, hey, there's a winner. And then that winner will be paid out automatically. So that's just a bit on, hopefully that gives everyone context of like where we were on the show. And I mean, we were super early. We, we talked about on the show about being four years old and we, I did meet Damien four, four years ago, but FX1 is actually only about eight months old because we, we pivoted towards FX1. So the FX1 website, the app, the brand, we went, we're not that old. So we, <laughs> and we were certainly new on that show. When we came on there, it was, it was daunting because we we're so new. We, you know, we, we kind of knew the vision of what we wanted to do and where we wanted to go, but we didn't have quite the clarity that we have now. And so, you know, dealing with the questions, dealing with Mario's questions, it was tough. It was tough, but we believe we had it well and we're proud of, of what we did and how we handled it and mario's ultimate comment before he sunk these guys was pitch was a lot of buzzwords do you need crypto <laughs> there are no users just to refresh people i just want to check yeah, can you guys yeah, see yeah. me now yes yeah, sir is that better oh there we go sorry about that just had a wi-fi problem awesome well trent Man, that's absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for introing your project and, and just giving us the context around everything. Um, man, I mean, the technology that you guys have just built is just phenomenal. I mean, can you imagine being a pound-for-pound -pound fighter and everyone's like, oh, this guy's a killer, this guy's a beast, and then you see the, the punches are actually not that strong. I think that's going to impact a lot of the, you know, it's interesting how you're incorporating betting into, into all of these uh, you know, with with the tech and then incorporating the community and Web three side of things into this. Um, you know, real quick before I go over the the questions with the judges and, and the team, um, it, it looked like things were going against you guys during the pitch until Ran had a change of heart and changed his mind from a sink to a swim. I bet I bet me and Mario have a lot to say on this too. But yeah, please. Yeah, absolutely, and we, we want to go to you guys. But but Trent, what what went through your head when you saw Ran change his mind and and where were you at that point during the pitch? And then we'll go over to the judges. So I think going on to the show, we, we wanted to, to swim. Why would you not want to swim? But we, we honestly didn't really care. We knew that this was not going to change where we're going, what, what was the outcome, regardless of it, you're going to be on the show, whether you sink or swim. So for us, it was more important to get our message across and do our absolute best job. So like me personally, when, when we didn't get the, the last vote from Aaron, Thanks, Aaron, for that. We, I, I wasn't that disappointed. I was like, well, you know what? That, that it is what it is. We, we've done our best and it's come through. But to hear uh, Rand interject and then talk about this narrative of changing his mind, it was definitely welcome news. You know what I mean? Like, we're definitely happy to hear, especially happy to hear his his way of wanting to mentor us. That was amazing to know that he wanted to help us and be more official. So we definitely look forward to getting Rand's help moving forward, especially given the position we now find ourselves in, which is far stronger than where we were on the show. So it was a welcome surprise. I'll put it that way. Definitely. Let's, let me jump in here because what you're referring to with Rand. So just so everybody knows, uh, the folks at home, Gracie said swim, Rand said sink, Scaramucci said swim, Mario said sink, I said sink, and then Ran changed his mind, says, you know what? I'll mentor you. I'll give you the business model. That was his critique. You guys don't have the business model. I'll give you the business model. And from what I'm hearing, he has not stepped up because he really eked out that camera time at the end. And I think he really needs to like set up and support you guys. Yeah, we're, we're, we're ready and willing. So uh, we look forward to hearing from Ran or getting into some conversations with him. That's, Sandra, that's yeah, sure. Sandra, I think, I think that's where you yeah, come in, Sandra. We need some quality <laughs> control on this. 100%, 100%. <laughs> no, 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 definitely. And that's what we're going to do, guys. That's what we're going to do. You know, the premises of the show is, is that we bring you guys in front of the wheels and the wheels and, 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 and the, the partners and the show will, will support you. So the next thing that is going to move now, we've finally aired the show, is we're going to bring you guys in contact with Ran. We're going to bring you guys in contact with the exchanges. We're going to bring you guys in contact with the partners on the show. So, yeah, make sure that, uh, you know, your DMs are open because we'll be helping you guys to succeed. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I, I'll just like to make a quick comment later. Um, Aaron, you're, they missed your speech, your Michael Jordan speech, which I love so I much. And uh, I think it's a shame people miss that. But, um, you know, my, my thought on that was 
I thought we had four out of the five. I knew we didn't have Mario. Um, so your 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 sync was a surprise to me. Um, but uh, you know, maybe it's if they edited now. they edited they edited the Michael Jordan speech for a reason. They've got great yeah, editors. Just, so uh, yeah. the rest of the editors hours, well done. I get but, it. You know, I got to make some cuts, but I appreciate you saying that, dude. That was a nice little moment. Things got like real at the end there. Maybe some behind the scenes things later on or something. I like it, but you know, I think I think coming in there, we knew that you know we're at a conceptual stage, and you know, Trent and I, you know, we knew we had our strengths and weaknesses as well on our pitch, and I think Rand came in, and you know, I started talking about the problem as I did the product, and I pushed back and said, no. I'm telling you about the, the problem because I, I knew that we needed to lead with our strengths. I knew we had to drive the conversation where we could with the judges um, and try and you know, control the conversation versus getting um, questions that we knew that were some of our weaknesses, which inevitably we did. Thanks, Mario. And uh, I think we answered them quite well, but you know, I think that was sort of a stage of the business as well, which we're at. Yeah, do you think, hold on, uh, Brett, do you think, uh, Trent, sorry, do you think my reasoning for sinking, doesn't mean you won't succeed, just means it's too risky for me, do you think my reasoning made sense? I don't want to just go out here and just start shitting <laughs> on you, because I think you guys were actually pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah, do you understand I think, why? Yeah, you, 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 painted some yeah. Good, you painted a good picture in terms of where we are, right? But where, where we were at that stage was super early. We were in concept stage, we were building, and that's why I kept bringing it back it's to, it's the people, it's the people that you back, right? Because... Yeah. So twenty people, twenty people, twenty people a day in the last four to five years um, was really the main critiques that you only had twenty users a day, and you've been in business four and five years. You've addressed the timeline, but yeah, twenty people a day. Are we? How are we doing with that? I'd be, I'd be, yeah, try, like, uh, try, I'd be, I'd be a bad investor uh, 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 and a liar if I actually said way based on those numbers <laughs> back then. Not sure what your numbers. Yeah, we started are, as a. When we started, we started as a company called Active Place in the sports participation market. We were trying to improve, mar uh, improve participation in marathons, triathlons, and we started this right before COVID. So that's what de completely derailed us. The mission we started on, we were derailed. We had to pivot. We had to pivot. We had to find traction. And that's what took us long. We, we'd, we'd be further ahead if it wasn't for COVID and around the world changing, you know, <laughs> so... But we probably should have made that clear on the show that we were actually further ahead than you thought because we we only just started on this brand not that long ago. Well, as you said, we're, we're eight bucks roughly when we came into the show, so we're very conceptual. But yeah, you know, I could see that you know we were a, a, a well-rounded product with you know active users pushing in marketing. So I can understand that, Mario. Yeah. Can I just say the. Uh the biggest, I think the biggest turnoff for everybody um, was the how early you were at that time. But I just want to say yeah. in retrospect, especially after watching the Super Bowl, I don't know, I think it was Nickelodeon yeah, play, yep. playing the one where Nickelodeon characters, yeah. like I totally, like obviously it's so like obvious that uh, sports and entertainment and VR and AR are getting more and more ingrained as the world is trending digital. And even more than that, with the state of the world today, it's pretty obvious people you know, want to speculate. People want to bet. I think somebody's going to do what you guys are doing, whether it's steak, whether it's bar stool, and it could be you. Like it could be yours to, you know, yours to get. We believe so. Um, but it was just really the. <laughs> we believe so. Yeah. That's awesome, and you know, thank you guys for you know sh sharing all the growth, and and it's exciting to see how far uh, FX One has come since uh, the the pitch day, and and since being on Killer Whales TV. Um, and and before. Yeah. And just before I, before I shut up, is, this, is it Aaron? You're behind Alcon Daily? Is it Aaron or Austin? Mario. You're my subscriber. I love I love the jab at Ran. <laughs> I was like thinking whether I should call him out here on the space. I'm like, you don't know. No, he's not here. Let me, not, let me be nice. And then you do it. That's my favorite thing you've said in the last three months. Dude, people like <laughs> you and me and, of course, Sander and Paul, we, you know, we care about the quality of the show. We want contestants on the show, and we don't want the contestant to see Ran eking out that camera time. Then you find out he didn't actually, you know, do just what he said he'd do. And he said, I'll mentor you. I'll give you the business model. And, you know, I think the quality is only improving with judges and contestants. And we had, like, FX's quality. Everybody on this episode is quality. But, you know, in order to maintain this quality, we need Rand to... Yeah, we, really we did, to be clear, we don't need Rand. We feel like Rand needs us a little bit more. <laughs> but we do feel like he would... He would be... <laughs> I love you. I swim. I swim. I swim. Trent, I'm in. Can I change my vote? Because I'm in this bitch. <laughs> but we would definitely welcome... Yeah, yeah. Rand. 
Rand's going to be sad he misses spaces. Um, that's that's absolutely incredible. Uh, real quick, guys, definitely retweet, like, and share the pinned tweet above. Um, and, you know, I want to ask real quick before we move on from FX1, um, if you can give us in a short answer, what's next for FS1, F FX1? What's coming up? Definitely the re release of our app. So that's why I say to everyone, go and download our app. You'll get there's links for our website. But it's really the, the release of this MVP. We've got to get real-time statistics for live fights that are presented in a way that you will not find anywhere else. The UFC only give you round-by-round -round stats, even if you're if you're paying for them from from a provider. You do not get real-time anywhere. So whether you're you're a better, whether you're just someone looking to be engaged more with, when you're watching about, you're going to do better with our app in your hand. So make sure you do that. But it's it's we're working hard to get this app released and. Then continue to build, continue the AI development, and then move and march into our, our move into betting. So that's that's what the new future is from us from a product, product side. That's phenomenal, man. Uh, let's let's head over to Vince and Paul. Um, how are you guys feeling? How's the Hello Labs team feeling? Yeah, doing great. I mean, just honorable mention on this episode as well for the guys from Noom. Uh, who are, are a kind of um, music marketplace. Uh, and we've got Ryan and we've got Florian as well, and they did a great job. So anyone who wants to see how they, they sink or swam, tune into the episode to find out. And, yeah, we're just super excited about this. We've just put the trailer out for this episode uh, coming this week, which is the gaming special, which is jam-packed with five projects. Uh, so it's like a bumper special this week, uh, five amazing new gaming projects, all trying to be the next kind of rock star games of Web3. So yeah, it's um, if you haven't watched an episode of Killer Whales yet, get your Hello tokens, head over to tv.hello.one uh, and, and buy the episode for this week or buy the whole season. I realize I'm shilling our own token, but I, I really feel like it's kind of, um, you, you won't regret it. And I think it's something that you're, this episode in particular is a really great kind of jam-packed episode, so it's worth a watch. I love that. Thank you, Paul. And gaming is an absolutely massive narrative hand in hand with entertainment. Uh, be sure to check that out, guys. It's the pinned tweet, the Killer Whales episode three. And it's going to be absolutely phenomenal to cover that on our next after show. So uh, without further ado, guys, thank you, you know, for everyone for coming out here today and listening, tuning in to the after show. Um, if anyone has any closing thoughts or words, right? Um, do you want to just say what's up, Ninja? I see your hand up. What's up? What's up? What's up? Yeah, I, I was rugging earlier <clears throat> when um, when Frank was up here. Is Frank still up here? Oh yeah, Frank is still up here. Because uh, <laughs> uh, Paul and I had to look at Frank's face quite a lot um, for quite a long time, and um, I was again. It's it's, a, it's it was a joke that would have been way funny earlier, but um, like the amount of times like we have bloopers of like Frank adjusting his hair, like we could create a whole reel of Frank adjusting his hair. Don't um, expose me, man. Come on, don't expose we got me, to Frank. But no, um, all jokes aside, um, great job. Um, all the uh, all the whales, all the projects. Um, I can't stress that enough. Um, cannot cannot stress that enough. Um, you know, as a producer, as a creative, as someone who you know put a lot of time and effort in. Like you saw other every person, every single person. Like there was no laggards um, on our team. Every every project brought their A game, no matter where they were. Um, I want to commend um, Frank. You know, for coming alone, uh, you know, young guy that that wasn't easy. Um, you know, in front of the judges. Um, same with um, same with um, uh, FX One. You know, they had some hard hitting questions. They took it on the chin. Um, you know, uh, new newer project. They, they clearly said they you know they were they were it was a, a lot has was not established like they are a year ago. And just encourage other projects in the space. Um, those who are listening. Those are, who are involved in, like you know, you you um, you know, we, we you don't have to be a perfect project to be on our show. Um, you know, you, you don't have to be completely all together. You know, but um, but you know, getting on the show, getting that exposure is paramount. I can't tell you enough. Um, Paul really has a, a really strong vision behind uh, creating more entertainment products for the crypto space. Um, there's huge amount of room for it. So um, you know, please continue to support us. Please continue to support all the other creators in the space, whether it's small, 
um, you know, or big or like, you know, Altcoin Daily. I want to give another shout out to Altcoin Daily as well. Um, they were producers on the show. A super clutch. Um, having those guys on. Uh, Paul and I called them many a times when we would just need something and they would just fly in and just handle it. And um, and just want to say thank you. Like, again, this is a really incredible experience and, and continue to tune in the episodes. And uh, Paul and I have said this many times and I'm, I'm sure Sanders feels the same way too. It's like, chime in with your comments, what you think, love it, hate it. We're, we're here for it all. It's just the first season. You know, it's our alpha version. So uh, much more, much more uh, fun to come. Great, man. Thank you, Ninja, for uh, cutting out all the shots where I'm adjusting my hair, which is uh, obviously not nothing. So no, nobody wants to see that. And uh, in general, Sander and Paul, very grateful for the opportunity to pitch um, at Killer Wheels. And I guess for me, in closing, I'm just yeah, wondering what's next for Killer Wheels. Like, what are you guys up to? What are the goals? I saw the season two; it might be announced. Like, uh, what what is the journey there? Yeah, so we're just getting started. We've obviously got the episodes on Hello TV. Then we've got the kind of mainstream streaming platforms. We, we're we obviously on Apple TV already, Google Play, and with more to come in the next few weeks. And then as soon as we're through kind of March 11th, when it premieres on the streaming platforms, we're then into season two. So if you're listening to this and you've got a killer project and you want to apply uh, to be on season two of Killer Whales, you think, well, you've got what it takes, head over to hello.one. Uh, and sign up on the on the website and get ready for for season two. It's going to be even more drama um, than season one. So yeah, if you think you've got the next big project, head over to there now and uh, and apply to be on season two. Absolutely love that. Uh, any closing statements for Sander? Yeah, guys. Again, you know, it's it, it's been a, a a dream working with you all. I think uh, the the episode is is wonderful. I would also recommend everybody to go have a watch. You know, we discuss Ethics One, uh, who are doing terrifically. If, if if you look at Traction, what they've been doing, uh, we we've talked about Frank. I you know I think we talked enough about Frank. Uh, Fr Frank, by the way, we did speak to Anthony today uh, or this week. Uh, and he, he did say that he had a high esteem of you. You were not only the pretty boy. So he definitely wants to take that back and say, you know, hey, keep on going. This is going really well. Um, and as a, as, as a final statement, you know, guys, also have a look at the new. Uh, it's a great product. We, we did it at, at a place for them on their space tonight. But they have a great project. It's really interesting to see what they are doing. They actually got funding. Uh, recently, they announced it on their official X account. I pinned the tweet. So have a look at them as well. They're definitely one of the top projects. And um, yeah, make sure to tune in for the next episode and, and next season. Incredible. And I just want to say thank you all for coming out today for the X After Show Episode 2 Space. Definitely go check out Episode 3 as the trailer is here. You can go pre-order on Hello TV. It's on our in our bio. And have a lovely rest of your evening or day, whichever part of the world you're in, guys. Thank you so much.